Good morning, brethren of Holy Joy Church Incorporated UAA, our main church in Sharjah, our branches in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Russell Kaiman Ajman, and members of Holy Joy Church Incorporated Doha, Qatar, all our Berean pastors, ministers, pastors in training, Berean students of Berea Academy Malaysia, and Berea Academy Middle East. So good morning. Today, our for this second week, our theme is, is still on the same theme that we had last week. We will only change the theme uh, next week, next and first and second week of September. So I will be preaching today about the perfect promise. So let us pray. Father God, thank you, Father, that you are always there with us. You have never given us up, even at times when we are not faithful, even at times when we have difficulties in life. You are always beside us and around us, protecting us from any attacks of Satan and his all his compound, principalities, rulers, powers, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. I pray, Father, that in the mighty name of your only begotten Son, Yeshua Hamaseya, you have given us billions and billions of angels of assignment, ministering angels of God, angels the destroyers, and all ministering angels of God assigned to this pastoral center, flat 2003 Abdul Aziz Al Majid Tower, B. Al Nada Sharjah, United Arab Emirates, our pastoral center from where this broadcast has originated as live streaming for all members and friends of Holy Joy Church Incorporated UAE. I pray that you will anoint my lips so that only the words you want me to speak to your people today will come out from my mouth. I pray that you will prevent any demonic contamination in my mind, in my heart, in my lips and mouth. That there will be no interruption from Satan, but all your angels will arrest all that are trying to interfere right now. I pray also, Abba Shiba Shamaim, in the mighty name, Yeshua Hamasaya, to also guard the houses of all our members who are watching this live streaming, their friends, and all invites to watch today and to listen to your word. I pray, Father, that your angels will continue to protect all those who are with us today, especially those whom you have prepared their hearts to receive you as their Lord and Savior. And most of all, Lord Yeshua Messiah, let the Ruach HaKodesh Elohim, your Spirit of God, manifest in each one's heart, so that I, as I speak your word, your word will penetrate in our hearts and it will become our guide our direction in the mighty name Yeshua HaMasiah I pray Amen so let us go to our Holy Bible and look at Galatians chapter 4 verse 6 so let us read Galatians 4 6 because you are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. As I said earlier, my preaching is about the perfect promise. The promise of God to come and to be with men. To redeem us, redeem the world, and to destroy the devil's works. Introduction God is awesome, wonderful, merciful. He has always been patient with us all these years. We have been disobedient 
and sinful all these years. But our Lord Yeshua HaMaseya has never left us nor forsaken us, but He is waiting for us to return. He came down, humbled Himself as God incarnate to every human beings, although by doing so, He made Himself a little lower than the angels. He did this to obey the Father to the point of death, even death on the cross. Yet, despite His terrible sacrifice for man, only 0.01% until today has returned to God. Many have enjoyed the worldly pleasure. Very soon, Yeshua Hamasaya will come back not as a Savior but as a Judge. We are now in the era of grace which is about to be over. But sin is still crouching at the door of people's heart until this day. Amen? First point, God's perfect promise of covenant to man. The people from the age of grace until the return of Yeshua Hamasaya are those who receive God's promise. Ang God's promise ng Panginoon, hindi po yan natanggap during the era of divine consciousness. Ang kanilang natanggap yun lamang consciousness that there is God. But sino ang Panginoon and whether there is a Messiah, hindi po nila alam. And during the time of the age of sacrifices, nag-sacrifice sila only on their own will. Wala pong nag sa kanila. So they just saw the testimony of the blood of Yeshua Hamasaya. And during the time of the law, they received the instruction. They received the commandment of God to offer the sacrifices with specification that the offer of the animals must be one year old, no older than that, and that the offer must be blameless, walang kapansanan. They received the testimony. And this time, which we call as the era of grace, which started after Yeshua Hamasaya ascended into heaven, sat down at the throne of God in heaven, and was crowned as the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and the Judge, the coming Judge. But, only at this era of promise that men receive the promise of God. So people living in the age of grace receive God's promise by the blood of Jesus Christ. Not by the blood of any animal, but the blood of Jesus Christ. This is the promise from God to redeem man from sins completely. And it is the perfect covenant of God with man to atone man from our sins forever. But, we should understand that the redemption can be done only by the blood of Yeshua HaMaseya. No other, not the blood of animals, not the blood of any other man, but only the blood of the Son of God, Yeshua HaMaseya, can atone our sins. From the age of divine consciousness to the age of sacrifices and the age of the law, mankind has offered thousands and thousands of animal blood to God. But, without the blood of the Son of God 
who restored the name of God, destroyed the devil's works, and assured eternal life to man, there will be no remission of sins by the perfect covenant of God. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 And according to the law, one may almost say, All things are cleansed with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So, intindihin natin that without the forgiveness of Yeshua Hamasaya, the only begotten Son of God, man cannot receive the forgiveness of God. We cannot go back to the fold of the Father. And most of all, and the most important, we will not be able to enter the New Jerusalem, but we will be thrown into the lake of fire. So, yan po ang mga consequences. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Only Jesus can forgive our sins. We are different from the people of the time of the law because the believers in the past whose spirit is dead but their faith remains alive will be judged at the final judgment. So lahat po na mga ipinanganak before the time of Yeshua Hamasaya na matay during their time without seeing the Lord Yeshua Hamasaya even though during the time of the era of law they received the promise but they will undergo the final judgment those who will not those who, do, who died without believing in God they would be immediately thrown into the lake of fire. Amen? But, we Christians, under the age of grace, we have already received the blood of Jesus Christ when we receive Him as our Lord and Savior. So, I will emphasize, maraming ayaw tumanggap dahil sabi nila, Mag-enjoy muna kami sa mundo dahil ayaw naming mag-born again. Pag nag-born again ka, maraming bawal. Kaya lang tayo binawalan ng Panginoon upang tayo ay magiging malinis. Dahil wala pong nakakaalam kailan matatapos ang ating buhay dito sa mundo. Eh kung hindi ka magising, katulad ng nangyayari ni Rico yan na namatay sa kanyang uh, nung siya ay natutulog o oh, paano siya makahingi ng tawad ngayon that's why tayo ay in-encourage ng Panginoon everyday to prepare ourselves so that anytime babalik siya anytime that we will rapture we will be able to meet the Lord and to enter the new Jerusalem Therefore, this is exactly the reason that the Holy Spirit will take over our life and seal us for redemption for the day of judgment. Amen? Pag natanggap na natin ang ating Diyos na buhay, He would, we would receive the promise of God in full. And we have already been justified by faith. Kaya, kung ganyan ang ating sitwasyon, Holy Spirit will immediately enter us. Kaya sinasabi natin na kung maborn naging tayo, we will receive the banal na spirito ng Panginoon dahil ang banal na spirito will be the one. Silyuhan tayo upang hindi tayo manakaw ni Satanas. Maliban lang kung natemp tayo ulit at iniwana natin ang ating pananampalataya ni Kristo. Tandaan ninyo yan, yun lang. 
Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 in him you also after listening to the message of truth the gospel of your salvation having also believed you were sealed in him with the holy spirit of promise ito pong banal na spirito ito pa ang promise ng Panginoon sa atin on the day Yeshua HaMasiah died for the sin of disobedience that was passed down from Adam to all humans, all people, after the time of Yeshua Hamasaya, were free of their sin. This sin of disobedience is now over. Dapat natapos na yan dahil namatay na siya sa cross at Dinala na niya ang lahat ng mga curses at mga sakit na nakuha natin mula ni Satanas after nagkakasala ang tao ng sin of disobedience. So dapat we are free. But ano ang nangyayari? Because all of us after the time of Jesus have no sin anymore, the Holy Spirit comes to believers. That's why, sabi natin, pag tinanggap natin ang Panginoon, ang banal na Espiritu papasok sa ating puso. Bakit? We are supposed to be free. Wala na tayong kasalanan dahil nga inoffer na niya yan doon sa cross ng Calvary. But, ano ang nangyayari? What happens is, death it still remains and the death is due to our intrinsic and personal sins so the death of the spirit continues kaya patuloy ang pagkamatay ng spirito ng tao dahil after tayo binigyan ni Lord ng karapatan na mabuhay binigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng freedom from the sin of disobedience Patuloy nagkakasala ang tao. Patuloy nag-inuman. Patuloy nagsigarilyo. Patuloy nangangalunya. Patuloy nagnanakaw ng time sa office. Dahil ginawa, text, text, text. Amen? Second point, the spirit lives by the life of Christ. When man sins, his spirit died. But, Christ did not raise our spirit to life. Hindi po binuhay ni Lord ang ating spiritong patay after nagkakasala si Adan. He is living inside us. Kaya lang sabi natin na nagkakaroon tayo, may hinanda si Lord na eternal life because siya na po ang nananahan sa atin. Kaya nga, papasok ka agad ang banal na spirito dahil spirito yan ng ating Diyos na buhay. So, He is inside us. We are living by His life now. So, we become new. We are now living by the life of Christ. In the time of the law, the blood of animals were shed. Lahat na animals that they offered ang banal na dugo na inalay nila ang banal na dugo na yan blood of animals could be only a testimony of the blood of the lamb Yeshua Hamasaya although it could be a testimony it cannot take away the sins of man so natanggap natin ang testimony of the blood of Yeshua Hamasaya but hindi po siya magpapatawad meaning hindi natin matanggap ang forgiveness ng Diyos sa pamagitan ng, ban ng mga dugo ng inofer inalay na mga animals bakit kaya Bishop? this is because animals are not spiritual beings. The blood of animals is not a spirit. 
Kaya po, hindi siya pwede dahil nga ang tao is a spiritual person. We need a spiritual being to redeem us. That's why ang banal na dugo lang ng ating Diyos na buhay is the one that can redeem us because He is a spiritual being. Ang mga animals, walang espiritu yan. At lalo na, they are not spiritual being at ang blood na inoffer is not a spirit. So the blood of animals cannot take away the sins of man's spirit. So namatay man ang espiritu ng tao nung nagkakasala si Adan at si Iba ngunit with all the thousands of animals offered and the blood shed in sprinkled doon sa altar but they are doing it only merely for their faith. Dahil naniniwala sila na meron talagang darating na mag save sa kanila. Sino yun? Hindi rin nila alam. Dahil ang pangalan na ng ating Diyos na buhay ay hindi pa binigay ng Diyos Ama. Pero alam nila na may darating. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4 For it is impossible <coughs> for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. But, though they keep on offering sacrifices on a yearly basis, their spirit is still dead due to the inherited sins from Adam. Sinabi ko na kanina, hindi binuhay ng Diyos ang created spirit na nibinigay niya kay Adam at namatay because of the sin of disobedience. So, patay pa rin ang espiritu ng kasalanan the spirit which we inherited from Adam remains dead for the people in the age of sacrifices their faith remains alive but in the era of grace our time now not only is the people's faith alive but their spirit is also alive so, tandaan natin ang pagkakaiba. People in the past, nag-aalay na sila ng dugo ng mga animals that they offer by the thousands and yet, ang spirito nila patay pa rin. Ang kasalanan nila hindi pa rin natanggal. Ngunit, ano ang pagkakaiba? This is the era of grace. And dahil sa grace ng Panginoon, tayo, binigyan niya ng sarili niyang espiritu. Hindi man binuha yung espiritong patay na the created spirit, ngunit ang spiritu natin ngayon na natanggap natin nung tinanggap natin ang ating Diyos na buhay as our Lord and Savior and ang ating buhay ngayon ating espiritu is now alive at ang espiritu na yan nang galing mismo sa Diyos, dalawa pong nangyayari. We have the Spirit of God which is alive. And ano ang pangalawa? Our faith is alive. Sinabi ko kanina na wala nga, patay nga ang espiritu in espiritu sa mga tao who died, who lived and died in the past. Ano ang buhay nila? Only the faith. But ngayon, under the period of grace or the era of grace, ang ating faith buhay at ang ating espiritu rin buhay. Dahil ang spiritong natanggap natin is the spirit of the creator. Amen? The spirit is alive by the life of Yeshua Hamasaya. It is living by the life of Yeshua Hamasaya. John chapter 11 verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Amen. Third point, 
people of grace receive the promise. Yun lang mga tao katulad natin na andito ngayon, nananahan sa mundo under the era of grace, tayo lang ang nakareceive ng grace mula sa Panginoon. Inexplain ko in my past preaching na ang grace, ibig sabihin, gift. Ano ang natanggap nating gift? Ang salvation. At ano pa? Parating na eternal life when we enter the dwelling, heavenly dwelling place of God, ang New Jerusalem, matanggap din natin ang eternal life. So, dalawa po ang matanggap nating gift mula sa ating Diyos na buhay. So, the people before Yeshua Hamasaya and the people after Him, tayo yun, are completely different. The people in the age of sacrifices and the age of the law, their faith is alive through though their spirit is dead. Alive ang kanilang pananampalataya pero patay ang kanilang espiritu. The people in the age of sacrifices saw the testimony of their faith through the blood of the animals they have slaughtered, while the people in the age of the law have received the testimony of the blood through the commandment to sacrifice animals they have received from God. This covenant that they would be saved is alive. By the way, I will remind lahat ng mga pastor, lahat na nag-aral ng Berea, tandaan ninyo ito dahil isa po ito sa oral exam ninyo bago kayo ma-ordain. Wala pong repetition dito sa Berea. Diba? Pag nag-aral ka dito at mahulog ka sa exam, there is no repetition. Isang beses lang. Ganon din ang ating tinatawag na ordination. Bakit ka naman i-ordain kung hindi mo alam ang katuruan ng Berea? That's why, ano pa, yung preaching ko tungkol sa resurrection, tandaan ninyo yon dahil ang resurrection at itong inexplain ko ngayon, na dinaanan ng tao mula sa era of divine consciousness to era of sacrifices to the era of the law and to the era of grace until the millennium yan po ang sasabihin ninyo para kayo ma-ordain pag hindi kayo papasa at hindi ninyo masabi ang totoo puro mga hakahaka sorry there will be no more chance No more chance. So, tandaan ninyo ito, pre-niche ko ngayon. Dahil maraming pastor nag-preach during the two weeks, hindi po kumplito yun. Itong sasabi, sinasabi ko ngayon is the complete history of mankind. Amen? So, Leviticus 17 verse 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls for it is the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement so we must understand clearly the difference between seeing the testimony and receiving the testimony which is a covenant of atonement But the people in the time of grace have received what God promised. Kailangan during the exam, ma-identify mo at masabi mo ang pagkakaiba sa nangyayari sa buhay ng tao during the different eras, biblical eras in the life of man. They have received the promise of salvation. The people in the age of sacrifice and the age of the law are the ones to be saved in the future. But the people in the age of grace are already saved. They received salvation. They have received what was promised by God. 
So tayo lang, nandito sa era of grace, ang natanggap ang ating salvation. John chapter 11 verses 25 to 26 Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life who believes in me will live even if he dies verse 26 and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die do you believe this saan sinabi ni Lord ito Ito po, sinabi niya during the time na pumunta siya kay Lazarus at kinausap siya ni Martha. Kaya sabi ni Martha at doon kay Mary na kanyang kapatid na siya ang buhay at siya rin ang pagka, pag, pagkabuhay, resurrection. Hence, let us understand that the people of this era are those who believe while living, they are alive and they believe. Walang ibang tao po, tayo lang. Na while we are living, nabubuhay tayo, ang ating espiritu ay buhay, at ang ating pananampalataya is also buhay. Hindi patay. At yan po ang pinaniniwalaan natin. People in the two earlier eras, the era of, of the law and the era of sacrifices, are those who believe but they died. Bakit sila patay? Eh, wala nga silang espiritu. Ang espiritu nila is patay. Though they are dead, when Christ returns, they will all live. Their spirit lives. So, baka magtanong kayo, Bishop, hindi pala sila mapunta sa New Jerusalem ang mga namatay na noon. Hindi. Hindi yan. Ang ibig sabihin, mabuhay pa rin sila. Paano? Pagdating ni Kristo, ang naniniwala sa Kanya, they believe, they have the Faith, buhay ang kanilang faith in a God that is coming, sila po makatanggap ng salvation. Ngunit, yung mula noon na matay in the past na hindi nila kinikilala na may Diyos na darating sila po hatulan kaagad at ihagi sila doon sa lake of fire with Satan. Amen? Point number four, the slaves of suffering receive grace. The slaves of suffering receive grace. Man does not go to hell because of their personal sins. So ano lang pala ang kasalanan na maitapon tayo sa impyerno, sa lake of fire, kung ang ating kasalanan is the inherited sins of Adam. Paano yan? Namatay na ang Panginoon, pinako na sa cross, sinave niya tayo dahil ang ating mga kasalanan, ang ating mga curses at mga diseases ay dinalanan niya nung siya ay ipinako ng cross. Ngunit, kung hindi natin kilalanin siya, na siya talaga ang anak ng Diyos na buhay at siya ang nagtubos sa atin ibig sabihin mamatay ka talaga sa kasalanan na disobedience na kasalanan ni Adam hindi ka talaga ma ma redeem dahil hindi ka naniniwala but kung naniniwala tayo Diyan, we will receive the salvation. Dahil sabi nga, wherever the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. So magkakaroon tayo ngayon ng freedom from being thrown into the lake of fire, freedom from all diseases and curses, 
and freedom from the punishment of God. Yan po ang ating matanggap dahil naniniwala tayo na siya ang ating Diyos at tagapagligtas. So, kailan, kailan ka mamatay sa sin of disobedience? Kung namatay ang tao na hindi siya tinanggap bilang Diyos at tagapagligtas at sila'y namatay na there is no more hope, there is no more opportunity. Amen? Everything starts with the sin of Adam. Since Adam dies, all men after him die eternally. In other words, our spirit is dead because of the original sin. But if anyone abandons his faith because of personal sins, that it will also lead to eternal death. I repeat ko. Ang sin ni Adam, which is inherited, yun lang ang makapagpatapon sa atin doon sa lake of fire. Ang ating personal sins, intrinsic sins, hindi po siya maghatid sa atin sa lake of fire. However, na born again ka na nga. Nag-backslide ka dahil bigla mong na meet si Habibi na na-in love ka at nagpa-convert ka ngayon ng another faith. Hindi ko na lang i-mention, but alam mo na yan, hindi ang totoong born again. Nag-convert ka ngayon sa kanilang religion dahil sa ka-in love-in love mo para ka mapakasal doon sa lalaking na inlaban mo or babaeng na inlaban mo. Anong ibig sabihin? Nagkakasala ka ngayon ng personal sins. But although sinabi ko ng personal sins na yan, hindi magdadala sa atin sa lake of fire, ngayon dadalin ka. Dahil kasi, nakilala mo na ang Diyos, nireject mo ngayon, tinalikuran mo siya. Anong ginawa ni Adam? Si Adam, tinalikuran niya ang Diyos noong nagpakita sa kanya ang serpente ang spirito ni Satanas. Therefore, bakit ka ngayon mapunta sa lake of fire? Sabihin ko, our spirit was oppressed by the sin of Adam. But, Jesus carried our original sins. He paid our sins. So, everyone, after the time of Yeshua Hamasiya, is freed from the burden of sin. I-repeat ko, nung tayo po ay sinave ng Panginoon doon sa, sa cross ng Calvary, dala niya ang kasalanan ng disobedience of Adam at dala din niya ang mga curses, diseases na natanggap natin sa kasalanan na yan, we are already considered free. Free na tayo. May freedom na tayo. Hindi na tayo ihagis doon sa lake of fire. But, ang ating life na libre na sana, wala nang, wala nang kasalanan, bigla kang tumalikod ng iyong pananampalataya kay Kristo dahil nga sa in-example ko nagpa-convert ka para makapag-asawa ni Habibi ibig sabihin you rejected God therefore although binayaran na ng ating Diyos na buhay ang kasalanan ni Adam the spirit of the people in the past is already dead before Yeshua Masiya comes Hence, they also became the path for the death of the Lord. They contributed to killing Him. So they were cursed because of their sins. They experienced persecutions, death by stoning, tortures, and so. They were sown. So the people in the past can be called the slaves of suffering. Naalala niyo ang title natin ganina? The slaves of suffering receive grace na receive nila ang grace but they were tawag slaves of suffering why dahil sa kanilang pananampalataya hindi nila sinurender ang kanilang paniniwala na may Dios na buhay 
although hindi nila nakita si Kristo, kaya naawa ang Diyos sa kanila, they will be saved. Hebrews 11.36-39 Ito po ang nangyayari sa kanila na mga persecution during their time and others experienced mockings and scourgings. Yes, also chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sown into. They were tempted. They were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, in goatskins, being destitute, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated. Men of whom the world was not worthy. Wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. And all this, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised. That is the history of the people in the past. But the people in the past prepared the way for man to become sinner. Paano sila na sinner? Eh di ba sila ang cause na namatay ang Panginoon? Nagsabi sila, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Kaya ipinako siya ng cross. Through Yeshua HaMasiya already, do Yeshua HaMasiya already carried our sin, inherited sin na nanggaling kay Adam and our spirit died. But when our Lord, Yeshua HaMasiya, came, the death of Yeshua HaMasiya is the merit of the people in the past because their faith in suffering for God was made complete with the death of the Lord. Amen? Hindi nila nakilala si Diyos, ang Diyos. Hindi nila nakilala si Yeshua HaMasiya. But nung dumating ang Panginoon at namatay siya, ang kamatayan ng ating Diyos na buhay, na complete ngayon ang pananampalataya ng people of the past. Why? Namatay nga. Ang pinaniniwalaan nila na may darating na mag-save sa kanila, nangyari na. So, they are now saved. Kasama siya sa atin na magkakaroon ng salvation. Although, I repeat, hindi nga nila nakilala si Jesus nung time na yun. Even those who disobeyed and died, during the time of Noah, the death of the Lord became their gospel that preserved their spirit in prison. Diba, prinitch ko ito sa nagdaan na mga preaching ko? na bumaba ang Panginoon sa mga descendants of Adam na nagkasala, di married, the daughters of men na walang espiritu, sila nakulong, kinulong sila, and in prison, nag ang ating Panginoon. So, the, the death of Yeshua Masya became the gospel for them to be saved. Hence, it became salvation to those who call upon the name of the Lord. Amen? 1 Peter 4.6 For the gospel has for this purpose been preached even to those who are dead, that though they are judged in the flesh as men, they may live in the spirit according to the will of God. Amen? Fifth point, and the last one, the sin of unbelief drags soul to hell. When Jesus died, people in the past were already dead because of their original sins from Adam. So, he did not need to die for their sins because when Yeshua HaMasiya arrived, they were already dead. After Jesus resurrected, His life entered them in order for their spirits to live through though they already died because of sins. So, sinabi ko kanina, di ba bumaba siya, pumunta siya doon sa mga na preso. Put in prison dahil di disobey during the time of Noah that caused God to destroy them through the flood. Nung nag-preach siya, lahat 
na nakakilala sa kanya doon at tumanggap sa kanya ano ang nangyayari the spirit of Yeshua HaMasiya entered into their spirit so they received also salvation Amen? People after Jesus who are under the era of grace tayo yon. they perished because of their unbelief hindi tayo namatay dahil sa kasalanan ng disobedience dahil nga tinubos na tayo ng Diyos but dahil sa ating unbelief hindi tayo naniniwala di ba maraming hindi naniniwala sa Panginoon nag insist na ang kanila daw religion yun daw ang magpapadala sa kanila doon sa langit there is no other name under heaven that will give us salvation only the name Yeshua Hamaseya Amen? So, ano ang kasalanan sa mga tao ngayon? Unbelief. Hindi nanin, nanampalataya kay Kristo. The people after Jesus who have sins, but Jesus carried their sins. Only unbelief remain. Sinib na sana sila ng Panginoon. Hindi nila matanggap ang kalig Tasan dahil hindi nga sila nananampalataya na si Jesus ay anak ng Diyos na nagbigay sa kanila ng kaligtasan. Jesus fulfilled their faith. By shedding His blood, Jesus made the faith of the people in the past perfect. So kung tingnan mo, sa mga tao ngayon na may unbelief, hindi naniniwala sa ating Diyos na buhay, i-compared sa mga tao noon, that their faith was alive but nung nagkip, nagpakita ang Panginoon after He resurrected in paradise tumanggap sila sila pa ang may salvation kaysa tao ngayon na nakita na sana nila ang Panginoon at hindi naniniwala so mag careful po tayo lalo ng ating mga bibig na magsabi ka, ay hindi ako naniniwala, talaga, mapunta ka talaga sa impyerno, huwag natin gamitin ang ating bibig, dahil nakikinig yan ang Panginoon. Amen? Jesus fulfilled their faith by shedding His blood. Jesus made the faith of the people in the past perfect. So, in the age of grace, if you believe in Yeshua Hamasiya, you already have salvation and you will receive eternal life when we enter the new Jerusalem which is the heavenly dwelling place of God if you don't believe then you stand condemned kung namatay tayo at hindi tayo naniniwala at hindi tayo nanampalataya na siya talaga ang Diyos na magbigay sa atin ng kaligtasan we stand condemned Buhay pa tayo, kinundim na tayo ng Diyos Ama na hindi tayo nanampalataya sa kanyang anak na binigay niya sa atin. John 3.18 He who believes in Him is not judged. So, tayo na nanampalataya sa kay Kristo, may judgment pa ba? Wala. John 3.18, i-repeat ko, He who believes in Him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already. Buhay pa. Kaya tingnan mo yung mga testimony dyan sa YouTube. Buhay pa ang tao, nakita na nila ang kaluluwa na naghirap doon sa impyerno. Ha, hinatula na kasi ng Diyos Ama. Because He has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Therefore, He already stands condemned. If the people in the past believe, they will be saved. So, mabuti pa ang hindi na buhay ngayon. Yung sila ay people in the past. Dahil lahat na naniniwala in the period of, in the era of the law, and the era of divine consciousness, and the era of sacrifices, when they believe, they will be saved. If they don't believe, they will be judged as the, at the final judgment. So, kung meron noon na hindi naniniwala, patay na sila, buhayin na lang sila ng Panginoon, 
during the resurrection, magpila sila sa harapan ng Diyos so that they will be judged. So ano ang judgment dyan? Ihagi sila sa dagat-dagatang apoy kasama ni Satanas. Galatians chapter 4 verse 6 Yung scriptural verse natin na binasa ko kanina Because you are sons of God God has sent forth the spirit of, the, of His Son into our hearts crying Abba Father Amen Today, Yeshua Masiya is calling you not to remain in unbelief That is killing people after the time of Yeshua HaMasiah. I-repeat ko, ang unbelief, yun po ang magpatay sa atin dahil sigurado tayo na ihagis tayo sa dagat-dagatang apoy. Kung mamatay tayo na hindi man lang nakahingi ng tawad ng Panginoon at hindi tumanggap sa Kanya bilang Diyos at tagapagligtas. To God. Ito na ang reason. Bakit siya? itapon sa impyerno pag hindi nanin, nan, nanampalataya at nagpaiwan sa paga sa unbelief to God the sin of unbelief of turning a deaf ear to the word of God and staying away from the Lord Yeshua Masiya is a grave sin napakalaking kasalanan Bakit kaya, Bishop? Because the sin of unbelief killed Yeshua HaMasiya. Lahat na hindi na nanampalataya sa Kanya during the time in the past, yun po ang nagpapatay sa ating Diyos na buhay. God considers the sin of unbelief under the age of grace as same as the sin committed by Adam against God. Ha? Yan pala ang kategori. ang kasalanan natin ng unbelief, i-consider na ngayon ng Panginoon na similar sa epikto ng sin of Adam of disobedience. So, hindi na siya ngayon magiging personal sin. Originally, unbelief, original sin. But, God will consider it the same epikto sa sin of disobedience, the sin of disobedience of Adam. So, man, spirit, continued to die of sin until today and unless he surrenders his unbelief to God today, there is no other hope left but for his soul to be tormented in the hell fire. May I invite you now, every one of you who has not received Yeshua HaMasiah yet as their Lord and Savior, Isang bagay lang ang dapat nating isurrender. To surrender your unbelief. There is no other way to go but to the, back to the Father and to heaven but only through the one and only Holy One of Israel. John 14 verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Those who are ready now in their heart to receive Jesus Christ, please follow after me in a clear audible word to let the devil hear you that you have decided to return to our Father God in heaven. Hindi natin ibulong ang pagsunod sa prayer. But audible, ibig sabihin maririnig. Anong purpose? Hindi yan para sa Diyos upang marinig ni Satanas na iniwanan mo na siya dahil babalik ka na sa ating Diyos Ama. Amen? So let us now pray. Father God, You are an awesome God, a great protector who is always with us in our difficulties and trials. I thank You, Father, for sending Your Son Jesus Christ to take us back to you in the new Jerusalem. I am grateful, pa, Father, that you have not given me up all these years 
of my stubbornness and sinfulness. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me for not listening to you. Help me to forgive others who have hurt me along the way. Today, Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. Dwell in my heart as my Lord and Savior, Master and God. Now, write my name in the book of life so that on Judgment Day, I will be with you in the new Jerusalem, your heavenly dwelling place. In the mighty name of Yeshua Hamaseya, I pray. Amen. 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 Let us pray. O Abba Shiba Shamayim. Thank you, Father God, that you are so great. You are an awesome God. Only by your love that we receive your only begotten Son, Yeshua Hamaseya, the Son, your Son, who came to destroy the devil's work and to redeem the world and to redeem us from Satan. Thank you, Father, that until today you have considered us as your son and daughter. Lord, Yeshua HaMasaya, thank you for reminding us all the things that we should do to receive you as our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Yeshua HaMasaya, that from this day onward, your Holy Spirit will manifest in my heart so that even those who just received you, Lord, as Lord and Savior, manifest the Holy Spirit in each one's heart so that from this day onward, the desire, the thirst, the hunger to know you more and to receive you with all our heart and to receive you as our only Savior will be complete in the mighty name of our living Yah, Yeshua Hamasaya, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah po, Panginoon. Thank you.